Hey, what's up Minecraft tonight? It's Bebop Fox here, and it's been a while since I did an interview. However, now I get to finally do one, and it's with none other than Fiery UK. These guys are the time-lapse guru geniuses, call them what you will, but you've probably definitely seen one of their videos at some point somewhere, if you've been in the Minecraft community, I gotta say. So, here you go, Phil and Matt. Hey, what's up guys? Hello. Hey, first off, your guys set already in the background, I'm pretty jealous of. A lot of <laughs> nerding going on here. <laughs> Yeah, we tried, you know, I, I watched the show, so it was uh, <laughs> trying to keep up to the standards, you know. Thank you, thank you. I, I'd say you, uh, you, you're you pretty much there. You mix up a little bit, I think. <laughs> I think it means uh, I have no money left, so... <laughs> <laughs> you don't need money, as long as you feed your hobby, that's all that matters. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and representing with the shirts as well, very nice, very nice touch. Bazenga. <laughs> yeah, gotta bring a bit of the Big Bang Theory in, you know. Sheldon yeah. Cooper all the way. All the way. All the way. <laughs> Okay, so stats right now, you guys are sitting at, let's see, 10 million views already. You've only been doing it for a year. Uh, 113k subs. Man, I have seen you guys since the very beginning, I think, because uh, what was it? It was like maybe uh, your second video, your second time lapse where Notch tweeted it out, and that's when I saw it, and I was like, I definitely need to put this on the show. And since you've been on probably five times, I've talked about you guys in the Minecraft Monday show, so you guys are well deserved, but I mean, how is all that? It's just so fast. How does that feel? It's crazy. It's crazy that it's happened so fast as well. It's, it's, yeah. it's absolutely mental. Yeah, no, I mean, w when that happened, I was away on holiday, and then I came on, like, in a hotel room, and just, you know, Matt's reaction, I was like, we've been tweeting my notch, and from there, it was just, <laughs> it went crazy, like, overnight. It was insane. So. I mean, when we started, we started with like, when we started doing Thomas, I think it was about 900 subscribers. Oh my god. When we first did that oh first my one. God. And it's like, it's just gone crazy since then. And that was those 900 from, from like when I used to do Machinima videos on Halo and stuff way back mm. when. So things have just slowly evolved from that. And then we moved on to Fire UK and. This is where we are now. It's yeah, crazy. no kidding. It's no time. It was uh, this week, wasn't it? Or last week when you got just one year um, since the last year. Yeah, that video. was the yeah. one year since we first did our first video together was April 14th, 2011. So. Well done. Well deserved. And uh, I mean, it's great to see, of course, as always, the Minecraft community supporting, well, you know, deserved content like that. And that's what's really hard, I think, is to find gems. You know, it's like only 900 views, uh, 900 subs, and it just... You know, and then you just need one little push, and then everybody mm. finally knows about you. Now, we often get quite a lot of people asking, you know, how do you get big and famous and stuff like that. And we d I have no idea. It just happened. <laughs> there was no real kind of sorcerer's trick or anything. You know, if you just you keep at it, you keep pursuing, you you know, you get there. So Good content, yeah. we didn't, you know? We didn't go to some sort of witchcraft school and just started <laughs> doing spells or something, and it happened. It just, it just <laughs> came out of nowhere. Maybe it was. Maybe Notch put a spell, and then that's how it all happened. Maybe it was all Notch. The power of 500,000 followers. Yes. <laughs> It'll do that. It'll do that. And uh, I think the biggest key when it comes to being noticed and everything else is always improving your quality because people want to see where you started and where you stand now. So if anything, I think you guys have definitely pushed a limit with each video, changing up the style, how you film. Do you work directly at all with the uh, mod creators? Because you, you use several different mods. Yeah, I mean, the main one we're using at the moment is called the Camera Studio Mod, and that lets us move around and twist around and do all those crazy camera angles that you see. But, I mean, mm -hmm. we've talked to the guy who did that. We've got a guy, one of our uh, moderators called Ben, who kind of communicates with a lot of the uh, moderate, uh, different people who make mods and things like that all around. And, I mean, before that, we used web to make us move slowly through things. So we'd place web down, and then the camera would move through <laughs> oh, yeah. it. And that's how we did that. I mean, we, I had to tape down my mouse at times and stuff. <laughs> but you should have seen the rig. It was crazy. And then before that, it was just static camera shots. So we've gone from static to a crazy thing that just came out of nowhere to now using a proper mod, which lets us get really, really cool dynamic shots like that, like seeing behind me from Red Rock City. I mean, it's so cool that we get to do this kind of stuff now. All right, now working with the mod developer, do you ever like feed him features that you want to see or things that would make your job a little bit easier when creating time lapse? Um, I guess sometimes, yeah. I mean, we've said little things that we wanted, and he said either that they're planned to come in the future, or he says that they're going to be implemented the next time. It's like, well, that's good. At least we're thinking on the same kind of li uh, you know, same lines as him and stuff. So it's always good to do uh, things like that with mod developers, because then you know that if you're thinking on the same wavelength, you know, you're going to get what you want, and you're going to be able to create the content that you really want to make. Definitely. And when it comes to Machinima, like I've done Machinima in other games like Second Life, I, you know, it's really hard to find people that are accommodating like that and saying, I want to make something just as good as you do and make it, you know, quality content and show it off. So it's really great that you have somebody personal at hand like that. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really great because um, obviously these people, you know, are working really hard and mostly like all the time. So it's really great just kind of giving that feedback and the honest feedback as well of saying, we really like your product. It is really, really good and helpful. You know, we want to help other people come along and find it as well. So. Now, the, uh, the, you guys live stream a lot of your builds, actually. So how, I can't even imagine, I've, I've seen one of them, and the logistics, it seems like you break them into teams. The logistics behind it, is that more of Phil's work, or because that is just insane and well, time-consuming it seems. I will say, we used to time-lapse all of our builds. We don't anymore. Uh, but live it depends. <laughs> yeah, like, what time, did I say time-lapse? God. Uh, yeah, live stream <laughs> our builds. But live streams are kind of a, a meaty thing themselves when it comes to getting people into the right way because we kind of had a different method to live streaming time lapses than we did you know doing time lapses as we just know and do it now but Phil does kind of organize quite a lot of the teams behind the scenes to make sure they know what they're doing to, in terms of designs or the templates that we're going to have to build yeah mm -hmm. we used to sort of have it where a couple of people would know like the build leaders would know what they were doing but we often found that most of the regular builders they just got completely confused and didn't know everything but now we've gone like we have stuff prepared weeks in advance with templates and make sure that everyone's kind of like you know this is what's going down this is what how we want things to look and it's been really great to get a lot of their build you know the regular builders to have their creative input and just to see what they come up with they surprise us every single day so most times it's out of our control actually it just kind of it just you know, goes the way it's going to go. Okay, now I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, how does one actually become part of Fire UK to be a part of the building team? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, the main way that we have open a lot to, to a lot of people a lot of the time is donations, and that's uh, done in waves, so people can donate a certain amount and uh, join uh, that way. But the other way for people who can't donate or don't want to do that is uh, through external competitions that we host on the YouTube channel where people put video responses and those video responses are like their builds that they do or anything like that that they think might impress us. And then the best five we choose and then they can come onto the server and build with us and stuff. Yeah, very cool. That's like the best way. It's because you need like 50, 60, sometimes 100 people, right, yeah. to, for some of these builds. So you're really looking for people that can do it fast, have, yeah. you know, pretty, pretty creative ideas. You know, I can't mm. imagine having to go through all those applications. Oh, there's it, it hundreds of those great. at a time, so, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. We usually set aside a good, like, day just to kind of kick back and watch through them all. I mean, that's great viewing, but it is, it's a yeah. very lengthy process. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't imagine. Now, the uh, the last people I interviewed was actually Had Films, if you guys have seen that. Uh, and you guys have been working with them personally on a an adventure map just for them to run through. Uh, how's that going so far with them? Have they uh, successfully, I don't know... <laughs> Ran it. <laughs> they're they're not quite the way yeah though. We're still sort of working out parts of the map and stuff as they're kinda of going along, but it's great to hear the feedback from what they have got so far though, because it's a mixture of like, that was great, but we kinda of hate you guys because that was really difficult. So. <laughs> but no, they're they're an absolutely amazing bunch of guys. They're really down to earth, so it's great working with them. You guys built a huge map so far, it looks like for them. They're not even close. Yeah, yeah. I mean I've it's been, it's been really, really fun building for them because the way we've kind of designed it for them is it's this split up of areas of like survival and then dungeon, then survival and then dungeon. And the way it does that is it kind of oh. gives two different styles of videos for people because once they get to the dungeons, it's more of a, a cinematic like puzzle or a challenge. But then they go into these survival areas and they have to play raw Minecraft. They have to build, they have to cut down trees, and they actually have to get the tools to actually conquer the map. So it kind of mixes things up, which I thought was a pretty good idea for their video series because obviously that's what it was going to be focused on mostly was the videos on their channel. Oh, definitely, because that's their kind of style. Mm. That is really creative. Um, now, the other people you worked with recently also was uh, Captain Sparkles and his team on Fallen Kingdom on that music video, which came out great. The build was great. Thank uh, you. You guys basically built it and then exported it out to, he exported it out to Maya, and uh, we saw its beauty. So people, of course, are going to wonder when, if, what can, you know, will that ever be available? Unfortunately, yeah. at the moment, we technically don't own the map as such. It's kind of, well, we built it, uh, but we've given it over to Captain Sparkle, so it's sort of in his domain at the moment. If he wants to go ahead and release it, I'm we're totally 100% behind that. You know, we're more than happy to do so, but... Again, it's mostly just his decision, sort of like when we had uh, the Syndicate project. You know, he released the map after he'd finished going through and playing it, so mm, yeah. maybe. 
Maybe in the future, maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, you guys will definitely be able to download what's playing behind me right now, which is the uh, Hat Films adventure map that we just talked about, an Epic Hat Venture, when they've finished it. When their series is finished, we're going to do a co-release of it, and you'll be able to play that and experience it and, you know, find all the hidden things that maybe they missed and maybe beat the challenges faster than them. <laughs> I'm hearing they missed more than a couple. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is quite it sort of like a little irritating just to sort of see, you know, you're just like, no, just go left. Just, you know, and it's, <laughs> you're screaming at the TV, but it's fine, you know. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine you put all the put all that work in. So. Oh, it's fine. It, it, literally, it's more of a case of we were happy just to see them playing it. So it's great to yeah. see how they take the whole thing in. So. All right, now one thing I gotta say is uh, the most enjoyable thing about your video is not only visually but also uh, the music that you use and so by approaching Nirvana and I only discovered them through you guys so I'm sure they're more than happy to see it being used in such a creative way. How did you guys go about actually working with them? Well it's it's been really really cool just working with them in general because we just found them in a way on YouTube and then from that we've just started using the videos and then they messaged me and like, you know, we're really happy that you're using it. Do you want to, you know, talk about it? And then it started off as much more of a professional relationship between, you know, two companies in a way discussing music and things. And now it's turned into this friendship where we have a joke and we have a laugh around with both Sam and Andrew all the time from Project Nirvana. Those guys are great. And they made an album for us called Lapse in Time and we used a lot of that. They've just finished a new album called Blocking the Sky for Captain Sparkles and in the future they're probably going to do uh, some other things for us as well which we're looking forward to really getting our hands on and using more of their music because we love, just absolutely love their music 100%. Yeah, it's, it's no longer just a case of like the songs that they have and stuff, it's just it's their style of working things, it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, just for any YouTuber to get a hold of it because you know they let you use their music just as long as you credit the artist which I think is a fantastic way of small music developers and you know creationists just to kind of you know blow up into these massive artists and stuff oh i couldn't agree more uh when you hear it's kind of like the uh Incompi tech person who's the most well-known youtube music person because he freely lets everybody use his music and <laughs> for royalty purposes you know he only got known because you hear his music all the time yeah. over all kinds of videos so i think this is a great approach that they did and they probably there's, I don't think there's any kind of stronger partnership that they could have picked other than with you guys because of the visuals that you use along with the music. They really complement each other. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Matt edits all of the videos and stuff to the music as well. So it's not just a case of having just the song there for the song's sake. It's the, the video is actually made with the song in mind and the song choices. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the time it's picking the tempo, like getting the getting the right song and then that's the right tempo, so then I'll edit the, the actual timelapse to be the speed of that, and then in, when it gets slowed down, slow that down and then speed it up again, pick it up and stuff like that, and you can do that, you can work with time lapses because it's a speed based video, you can work that into songs and it just looks really cool, uh, especially working with the different kind of tempos and the different instruments approaching Nirvana use in their music. Now some people are going to wonder as well, as a machinima artist, what advice do you give other machinima creators and content creators for helping improve the look of their build or uh, just make it a little bit more cinematic? I guess one thing that you can do is just like try not to think of it like in too great a detail. Like when I used to film like live action stuff, I just, you basically just go out and film as much as you can and just, you know, try and get as much as you can from different angles and just step out of your normal boundaries, you know, don't feel too afraid to kind of say, well, I don't, I'm not too sure about that because what you might be unsure of, you know, fans might absolutely love. So, and another great thing is to also just try and get some feedback before like going showing out, just, you know, get some people that maybe aren't familiar with it and just get their honest opinions for it. You know, feedback is the best sort of thing you can have when creating new content. Yeah. Yeah, and another thing as well in post after you've filmed it, so maybe you've made something, you know, like you've filmed some really nice shots, you've used a, a really cool camera mode to film it all. In post, to make it even more cinematic, use something like Adobe After Effects to enhance it, either with plugins or through just the way you edit it. And also choose some good music as well. Just make sure you, it's all there because once everything comes together, that's when it, it, it starts to look cinematic because when you just start it and you're just filming it, it might not look cinematic until you've finished that post process. Hmm. I think that'll definitely help people out. Now in just one year all this happened so quick, are you guys still working on a second job or are you actually make this full time now? This is this is full time, Fire UK <laughs> is pretty much full time for us now. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I never cool. I never foresaw it, you know, it sort of came out of the blue really, but um, I mean I left my job last year and then you know we just started making videos and then from there it just turned into a job. It wasn't something that I actively saw, it just 
sort of showed up at my doorstep and was like, yeah. hi, I'm here now, you know, <laughs> welcome to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> There's only these rare times that I think of it as a job, though, because a lot of the time it's still a hobby to me, because I was making YouTube videos for, I think, four or five years prior to doing Minecraft stuff. I mean, I did uh, Machinima stuff with Machinima.com as a narrative network um, director, mm -hmm. so I was working with them on things before all this happened so it's always been a hobby for me while I was at school or educating myself with random things that I've done over my, my life but now it's it's full time it's kind of fun you know just be able to sit down design something and then plan out a build and everything and then start time lapsing it's, it's cool now we know you know Minecon 2012 is going to be in Europe you guys are in the UK you didn't make it last year but well you no matter where it is you know it's going to be in Europe well yeah. we'll be going. as it's in Europe we'll be there will be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel really, it was sort of a, a very last minute thing for us last year. And unfortunately, we just kind of decided, you know, it just wasn't something that we could make and, you know, do well. So, but we're definitely geared up for this year. You know, something that yeah. we're excited to meet, you know, our fans in person and stuff. So. Possibly, possibly a Minecon exclusive time lapse that will be shown Ooh. there first. So, Maybe. it's a bit of a tease for people. I'm just going to tell you, go ahead and say yes right now, so we'll, we'll just hold them to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing you guys there, that's for sure. Yeah, it'll be sweet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, Matt and Phil, it's been great interviewing you, and thank you for taking the time. Uh, real quick, of course, all the plugs. Where can people see your stuff, and where can they uh, get more of Fire UK? On YouTube, obviously, at Fire UK, that's F-Y-R-E-U-K, or on Twitter, at Fire UK. Facebook is Fire Dragon L4. That's our old one, but we've kind of stuck with it. Uh, that's Fire Dragon and then a zero and a four at the end. Um, and then the website is www.fireuk.com. Awesome. And then uh, I'll go ahead and, of course, link everybody below as well. So once again, thank you guys uh, for your time. And hey, guys, who do you guys want to see me interview next? We'll, uh, I don't know, maybe do more of these. So uh, harass more of Minecraft community fans. <laughs> All right, guys, I am Bebop Vox. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. And diamonds to you. My god, it's so loud. I just got <laughs> deafened. And that was me quickly doing it, you know, I can... Holy... Chest, chest stretch. Ah! <laughs> oh, just... <God. laughs> An injury doing an interview. Wow. How old professional. <laughs> I did it out with a take. <laughs>